Well, it's my hope, if you've watched my videos, that some of you at least are saying, well, heck, if this old geezer can do the rim-to-rim -rim hike, I sure as heck can. And my response to that is, yeah, you're darn right you can. If you train hard, and I really encourage you to, under to uh, make sure you train hard, but if you train hard and you don't have any precluding medical conditions, yeah, you're right. You can make this hike, and it is a magical, magical hike. Just, boy, just, it is such a great experience. So, if you're thinking about doing the hike, or you've already made the decision about doing the hike, you've got two critical decisions that you have to make right from the start. And the first is when you're going to go. And uh, let me address that real quickly. There are essentially two windows that you have to work with. The first window is uh, the uh, middle of May when the North Rim opens until the 5th of, uh, until about the 5th of June, generally speaking. And the second window is from the um, middle of September until the end, the middle of October, when the North Rim closes. Those are pretty narrow windows, and and I define those windows as windows where the temperatures are are you know reasonably manageable. But again, I'm being general when I say that. For example, I when I did my hike two weeks ago, I talked to a fellow who had done his hike on the 15th of September. And uh, he said it, that day it was 110 degrees uh, on the, uh, at Phantom Ranch. So you want to pay attention, but those are general windows. If you're going to go between the middle of June and the middle of September, you have to prepare for some pretty um, extreme heat possibilities. And I say that because it is not uncommon during the summer down at the bottom of the canyon for the temperatures to reach 120 degrees or higher. So you have to manage that. But I have two suggestions for your consideration because frankly, even though you've got those two nice windows that I talked about, a lot of people just don't have the logistical uh, capability to go during those windows which means you're going to be hiking in June, July, or August. So, let me make a couple of suggestions for your consideration if your plan is to go during those months. Because, honestly, a lot of people, a lot of people do go in June, July, and August. Here's my first suggestion. And I know you're not going to like this, or at least many of you are not going to like this, but my first suggestion is this. Get to the trailhead at 2 a.m. I know that sounds early, but I'll explain to you my reasoning in just a second. Now, when we talk about trailheads, let me just cut to the chase on this. Unless you have some need to really challenge your body, the route that you want to take on the rim-to-rim -rim hike is from the north rim to the south rim. Because as strenuous as the north to south route is, the south to north route is even worse. You actually have to climb roughly 2,000 feet higher on the, uh, on the south to north rim than you do north to south. And that, by the way, is the route that I took, north to south. So, give me kind of a look at the uh, valley that I'm going to start hiking down. So, getting back to the, uh, and again, I want to emphasize that um, the route you want to take is from the north rim to the south rim. So, if you get on the 
north rim at 2 a.m. It's going to take you about six hours to get from the north rim down to the Cottonwood Canyon. I'm sorry, down to the Cottonwood Campground. Now, the Cottonwood Canyon, so I said it again, the Cottonwood Campground actually marks the end of the steepest descent, but really, of the steepest descent on the north rim, but really the steep, steepest descent that you're gonna do is from the north rim down to Manzanita. I think there's only about, it's about a mile and a half between Manzanita and, um, and Cottonwood. And I think you only drop something like 600 feet in a mile and a half. So the worst you're gonna do on the descent is from the North Rim down to Manzanita. So if you start at the North Rim at about 2 a.m., you will make it down to the Cottonwood Campground at about 5 a.m. Now keep in mind, around mid-July, the sun comes up around 5 a.m. And, um, and it sets around 8 o'clock in the evening. So you start to get, you start to get um, uh, pre-dawn light at around 20 to 5 and you have about a half an hour of twilight after 8 p.m. to work with. And generally you get about 15 hours of sunlight to, uh, to work with. Now, obviously, if you're starting at 2 a.m., you have to have your headlamp with you and uh, make sure you bring extra batteries just in case. So, getting back to the, to the route, you'll be at the Cottonwood Campground at about 5 a.m. And you should easily be able to make it to the um, to the uh, Phantom Ranch by about eight in the morning. That's really good because you'll you'll get the if you talk to the backcountry rangers or any of the other rangers, they're going to tell you do not be on the trail between noon and 4 p.m. That's a decision you have to make for yourself. But if you make it to the to the um, Phantom Ranch by about 11 a.m., it took me actually six and a half hours to do it, but I also did a lot of filming uh, during that period. If you make it by 11 a.m., I'm sorry, by about um, 8 a.m., you uh, can rest for half an hour and then start up the south rim of the Grand Canyon somewhere around 8.30, which puts you three and a half hours before you reach the witching hour of noontime. Now, by, for me, on my hike, I uh, took me seven hours from the bridge to the top of the canyon. And I think that's probably a reasonable time frame to look at, although I do have to say I stopped a number of times to film during that period. But honestly, I think giving yourself seven hours is a reasonable time frame to work with. And so if you, uh, if you can uh, cross the bridge by about 8.30 in the morning, and remember that's gonna put you uh, technically three and a half hours after sunrise, uh, then that should get you to the Indian Gardens campground probably somewhere around 10.30 in the morning. It's a little over four miles, generally, a little over four miles from their bridge over to the uh, uh, Indian Gardens campground. So that should get you there about 10.30 in the morning. And uh, you can rest at the Indian Gardens. Let's assume that you, that you get to the Indian Gardens campground at about uh, 10.30. You can rest for a half an hour. 
and then you can make a couple of decisions. The first decision you can make is whether or not you want to push through the uh, unrecommended 12 to 4 time slot. And again, that's a decision you have to make for yourself. I will tell you that uh, a lot of people get rescued off that trail. So that's a decision you have to make for yourself. But if you do that, it'll give you another hour up the trail before you get to noontime. And um, that will actually put you in position right around noontime to actually do the hardest part of the hike. And the hardest part of that hike is from Indian Gardens. It's about five and a half miles from Indian Gardens up to the top. But um, it's probably worth considering that you're hiking from hotter temperatures at the bottom of the canyon to cooler temperatures at the top of the canyon. But remember, that term cooler is a relative term. If it's 120 degrees down at the Phantom Ranch, or predicted to be 120 degrees at the hottest in the Phantom Range Ranch, you may be hiking into up the North Rim, it'll be cooler, but it'll still be close to 100. So those are some decisions you have to make. The other alternative that you can do, which is kind of fun, is that you can uh, just take a siesta at the Indian Gardens campground. It's a nice place. A lot of trees, beautiful stream running through the area. You can lay down in the stream and soak your clothes. And by that, I'm not talking about your shoes and socks. Do not get your shoes and socks wet. It is a ticket to ferocious blisters. I say that again, do not get your shoes and socks wet in the stream. No matter what some people say, it is a ticket to ferocious blisters. So, um, you can just take a siesta there, pack a nice, really nice lunch, have lunch, take a nap, visit with the people. Everyone's pretty chatty and friendly down there. And then wait until four o'clock. Uh, you're looking at about five miles at that point uh, up to the top. So if you wait until four o'clock, you've got about four and a half hours until the um, sun runs out and you uh, should be able to get off, the, get off the trail before it gets dark, generally speaking. So that is my suggestion on how to hike the, how to hike the trail um, in the summertime. Now, the one thing that uh, I'm really going to encourage you to do, and this goes without saying, but there's a lot of water stops on that trail from North Rim to South Rim. And once you start getting into the heat of the day, soak your shirt, soak your hat, soak your hair, and do it at every water stop you can, uh, you can reach. And do a good, nice job of keeping you cooler. So anyway, that's my suggestion. But I want to tell you one other quick story. I um, was watching a video of a couple that were going to do the hike. And um, they were talking to a backcountry ranger. And they said to the ranger, what time would you recommend that we leave on this hike? Because it was predicted to be 120 degrees the next day when they were going to do the hike. And that backcountry ranger told them to actually start the hike at midnight. So that may also be one of the things that you want to consider. Now here's the downside, and there's just no way around this. The downside is when you start in the dark until you get your early dawn, pre-dawn light at about a quarter to five in the morning, maybe 20 to five in the morning, until you get that from two o'clock until five o'clock, you're going to be descending in darkness. And I know that that's a I know that that's not a, 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 a great development because you won't be able to see the canyon that you're hiking down. But unfortunately, there's just no way around that. 
Um, there's just no way around that. So that's just one of the things you're going to have to accept. Now, one of the things you could do, which is, uh, which is really doable, is if you can get to the canyon the day before you do your hike, if you can get up to the North Rim the day before you do the, your hike, you can actually hike not a long distance down the, uh, the North Rim Trail, North Kaibab Trail, and get to some nice overlooks. Now, personally, I wouldn't do that, and I only say that because I want to save everything I've got in my legs for the hike, but you can do that and get some nice photos and get some nice videos. But I would also say, too, that even though you can't get intimately uh, acquainted with the canyon walls as you're going down the North Rim, there are some truly spectacular, truly spectacular vistas that you can reach uh, by car, just just by the uh, uh, just by going to the North Rim. Beautiful vistas, and if you want and you've got your car and you're going for a drive, there's a uh, beautiful drive out to Imperial Point. You'll see the turnoff for that, and that will also give you some great opportunities to video and and take pictures of the North Rim area. So anyway, folks, that is my recommendation on how to handle the hike. Uh, if you're going to have to go in June, July, and August, it's still doable, uh, but you want to really make sure you're paying attention to uh, the temperatures that are predicted for the day that you're going to be going down into the canyon. You want to pay attention to uh, um, what hours you're going to be going through the canyon, through the hottest part of the canyon, and you want to really give serious consideration to, um, to uh, the 12 to 4 window that they talk about. Now, I have to tell you that when I did my hike, uh, I got to Indian Gardens, boy, I think it was probably about 1230, and I took a break from 1230 until probably about 10 after 1, uh, and then I just kept pushing on. Uh, keep in mind that the day that I did my hike on the 20th of September, that the high down at the Phantom Ranch was predicted to be um, 100 degrees. And I was already on my way out of the Phantom Ranch by a quarter to 11. So, uh, uh, that was a... Uh, that was the way it worked for me, and I just pushed on through, as did so many other people. Uh, but uh, I was pushing through, and it was expected to be about uh, 80 degrees up on the top rim. So I was actually going from, you know, a hotter temperature down at the bottom of the, of the canyon up to a cooler temperature as I was ascending through the mountain. So, anyway, that's... Uh, some feedback from the 71-year-old guy who hiked the canyon rim to rim. I hope that this was helpful for you. And uh, if you're planning on doing this hike, the only thing I can say is, is um, it's a spectacular experience. Plan for having a great time. Again, I want to emphasize you have to train for this hike. You know, the idea of, uh, of uh, strolling out of the uh, car and... Uh, taking on this hike, unless you're some kind of a super athlete, um, is, is, you know, not a, a good formula. You definitely need to be training. So, I'm getting near to the uh, lower section of the hike that I'm on now. Hope you all can see these beautiful fall colors that, uh, that I'm hiking through. And I'll wrap this video up here, and then... The next video is going to be dedicated exclusively to how I trained for the hike and some suggestions and some recommendations 
about how to make that happen.